Mathematical induction can be very useful to prove what are called divisibility theorems, which are found in number theory. And um, before we get into those, we need to define what we mean by divisibility at all. So the definition is, if A and B are integers, and B does not equal zero, we say that B divides A, or B is a divisor of A, if A over B is equal to N, or equivalently, A equals B times N, where N is an integer. So that's very important. The other thing I want to point out is that this statement, B divides A, can be written like this with a vertical bar. B, vertical bar, A, that means B divides A. Okay, so I could write, for example, that 2 divides 4 because, well, if I take my A, which is my 4, divided by my B, which is 2, I get this number, and that number is an integer. Okay, on the other hand, um, 3 does not divide, so I'll put a little line there, 3 does not divide 4, since um, 4 over 3, I'm just going to say here, does not equal an integer, right? So yes, 4 divided by 3 equals something. It equals a real number, but it doesn't equal an integer. So we're not going to say that 3 divides uh, divides 4. So we're limiting the sort of the, the context to be just integer numbers. All the operations involved in this, this uh, definition here just imply that we can only get integers out when we do this. Uh, a couple things to note is that 6 divides 0, and that's because... 0 over 6 is just equal to 0, and that's an integer. And it, therefore, you can obviously see that a, as long as a is um, not 0, um, a divides 0, since 0 divided by a will always be 0. For all natural numbers. And I guess I, if I said for all natural numbers, I didn't really need to say that a doesn't need to be 0. But in any case, um, there's an introduction to divisibility. Now let's see how uh, we can use this in our proofs, our mathematical induction proofs on these divisibility theorems. So generally, the divisibility theorems have this type of style here. So it says, prove by induction that 11 to the n minus 6 is, div is divisible by 5 for every positive integer n. So, you know, you've got this, maybe to you, somewhat arbitrary expression here. 11 to any natural number, if you take that number in minus 6, you're always going to get a number that's divisible by 5. I don't think that's that obvious, necessarily. You can check it for a few, for the first few numbers, and you'll probably get a sense that it's true. But if you want to show it's true for all natural numbers, we would have to use um, some sort of proof, and in this case, we're going to use mathematical induction. So we'll start with the base case. So the base case in this case would be, well, the first natural number, n equals 1. So is this statement true for n equals to 1? In other words, is it true that 5 divides 11 to the 1 minus 6? So does 5 divide 11 to the 1 minus 6? And I would say that it does because um, 11 to the 1 minus 6 is just equal to 11 minus 6, which is 5. And 5 divides 5, clearly. So it is true. Okay, so now we've got the base case set up. Now we move on to the inductive step. So we're going to assume... This statement is true for some kth natural number. We're going to assume that this is divisible by 5. And we want to show that this implies... that it's true for the k plus first natural number. So 
we're going to start, as usual, with this expression here, and we're going to use our inductive step to show, um, to, in order to get us to the fact that that, what I just highlighted in green, is also divisible by 5. Now, a couple of things we'll want to do is we're going to want to use our definition of divisibility here. This, this, these words here, we want to, we want to turn them into mathematical statements that we can, um, we can use. So, 11 to the six, 11 to the k minus 6 is divisible by 5. There's another way of saying that 5 divides 11 to the k minus 6, which also means that um, I, could, I could say that 11 to the k minus 6 is equal to 5 times some natural number. I'm going to just make up another uh, number here, or another letter here, so p, where p is a natural number. Or, uh, sorry, p is an integer. It doesn't have to be a natural number. It has to be an integer. Okay, so that, this, what I have here in orange, the way we're going to actually use that statement is we're going to, we're going to use this. Okay, so we'll just, we'll hold on to that. It's kind of, I'm just considering this kind of scratch work. Okay, so we're going to start with, Give myself more space here. We're going to start with the fact that so we're going to start with the fact that 11 to the k plus 1 minus 6 um, I'm going to rewrite that as 11 to the k times 11 to the 1 simply because it doesn't seem like there's anything else I can really do at that point. Now I need to show that this is divisible by 5. In other words, that I can write it as 5 times some integer. And I have this inductive hypothesis here, up here in orange, that 11 to the k minus 6 is divisible by 5. And then over there, I did kind of um, unraveled that definition to get something that I can use. It seems hard to imagine how I could get an 11 to the k minus 6 out of this expression. And the, so the way I do it is um, I kind of force it to be there. So this process will probably remind you of completing the square a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 11 to the k, I'm going to put a minus 6 there, with this times 11 out there in front, uh, in front and then a minus 6. Now I've changed this expression, so I, I can't possibly leave it like this and continue on. Let's just keep track of what I actually did when I minus that 6. When I minus that 6, I didn't really minus a 6. I subtracted 66, because that minus 6 would be times by that 11 outside. So to fix the fact that I really just sub arbitrarily subtracted 66 from this, I need to add 66 over here, and now everything's fine. And the reason I did that is because 11 to the k minus 6, if you go over to the scratch work there, that can be written as 5 times p, and minus 6 plus 66 is plus 60, and I'm just going to indicate, you know, where p is some integer, right? And again, I can use that fact because I, I'm assuming that 11 to the k minus 6 is divisible by 5. And by the definition of divisibility, that's what it means. And now we're basically done. This is 55p plus 60. Now, you've got to be very thorough, though, at this point. We're not done until we've established that 11 to the k plus 1 minus 6 is equal to 5 times an integer. So if I factor out a 5, I've got... That's 11p plus 12. And you may think you're done at this point, and you basically are. You just need to establish that we know, we know that this we, we know that that's an integer, and the reason we know that is because p is an integer. So 11 times that p must be an integer, and 11 times p plus 12 must be an integer as well. Um, in other words, the, the, the integers are closed under multiplication and, and addition. So I'm just going to indicate that here. Integers um, the integers are closed under multiplication and 
and addition, which just means that if you multiply two integers, you get another integer. If you add two integers, you get another integer. So that is the end of the proof. So there's an example of a divisibility proof using mathematical induction. That's sort of the style in which they they come, um, at least the way I, I do them. And um, on the next slide, I'll have you try one on your own. So go ahead and see if you can prove using mathematical induction that uh, 5 to the n minus 1 is divisible by 4 for all natural numbers bigger than or equal to 1.